inspired by my recent play with masking fluid, this one's still drawing, I thought it would be fun to play with Windsor & Newton masking fluid or the masking fluid of your preference and some brush -o today. So this is a quick, fairly easy tutorial that does not require a high degree of watercolor proficiency for you to be able to do it with success. So we are starting with some fluid watercolor paper, which is inexpensive cellulose-based watercolor paper that can be found at most art supply stores. You can also use Canson, um, what is it called? The, the cheapest Canson XL, Canson XL watercolor paper for this. This is not a difficult technique. So the next thing you're going to need is some brush soap or um, a little bit of bar soap, unscented if you have it, and a glass of clean water. So I'm gonna grab that really quick. So going to wanna have some water reactive watercolor crystals like Brusho or Ken Oliver's Color Burst. I put my Brusho here in a super handy little salt cellar caddy. And if you guys are interested in more tutorials on using Brusho, my channel has loads of them in the watercolor playlist. So please do check them out. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do when you're messing around with masking fluid is one, you wanna use a synthetic brush. Two, you wanna use a garbagey brush if you have one and three, you're gonna wanna put some brush soap on your brush to try and preserve it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dip our brush in the clean water, we're gonna swirl it around in the brush soap, get that brush soap worked into the bristles. This will help prevent your masking fluid from basically gluing your brush together. And then we're going to draw in our design. I'm gonna go something really simple and geometric since this is just a tutorial. And I want you guys to be able to do this at home yourselves. You could do flowers, you could do all sorts of shapes. You could do patterns if you want. And we're just going to sketch that in with our brush dipped in masking fluid. And I have the sort of masking fluid that is uncolored. And we're gonna do all sorts of blocks of different sizes. Give ourselves a chance to play with lots of brush out. I do have a little bit of a hard time drawing straight lines sometimes, especially if I'm chit-chatting with you guys. So do forgive my wonky lines. That's okay, we're mostly just playing here experimenting and learning new things. And you wanna let your masking fluid have at least an hour to dry. And you wanna be careful not to apply it too thickly because when you apply it thickly, it can and often will tear the paper. So unfortunately, you guys can't really see what I'm doing here because I'm using uncolored masking fluid. And I have had a problem in the past with my masking fluids staining my paper. In fact, this very masking fluid has done that. So you do, I do advise caution. This tutorial is not necessarily an endorsement of Windsor & Newton masking fluid. It's just a demonstration of a technique. So we're going to give this an hour to dry. And oh, go wash your brush out immediately. All right guys, so this has had plenty of time to dry. So I'm actually just going to use a water brush and get all of the, maybe not, get the paint that is currently in it, which you guys cannot see. Ouch, I'd left a bit of yellow in. But that's what shirts are for, right? And um, you can either use a water brush or you can use a regular brush. And it doesn't have to be synthetic this time. It can be what you got. So I'm actually just gonna grab a large round. And working one square at a time, I'm just going to fill it in and brush in my color. Sort of move the color around since we have these little self-contained cells going on. Then I will pick a square way down here, less likely to cross-contaminate. 
And that one doesn't need as much help with movement. And then maybe this one over here. And then, let's see. Might be able to get away with something in that one. Let's see. I kind of want a green. Sea green is a good green for this. And I'm gonna let those dry. All right guys, now that this first layer has had a chance to dry, we're gonna wanna take a brush and just remove any excess brush oh, if you can. Brushing towards the outside of the picture plane. And then we're gonna fill in another square. And if you happen to pick up any brush out from the past square, that just means we need to pick a color that might complement that. So maybe a purple. And you can use a wet brush to help move it around if you want. All right, and maybe a square down here and even though that picked up some red I'm gonna go with a blue and again just sort of move the paint around a little bit and I think I might try to go into that purple again and then this square down here will go with a leaf green. No, actually I wanna save up the leaf green for higher up. We'll go with trying to find a yellow. I guess a brown would work. And again, we're just gonna use the brush to help distribute some of the brush oak crystals. Don't wanna to do too much because brush oak has this neat effect of having multiple colors or multiple tones, and if you mix it too much, you're gonna lose that. So I need to allow that to dry. I'm sort of thinking I might go back into that red after and add some more color variation to the bottom. So this has had a chance to dry. We're going to go ahead and brush off the excess brush out, like we talked about. Now I wanna go ahead and go back into that red square I have a cup of clean water to help me facilitate this. And I'm just gonna sprinkle. There we go, so much better. So I guess I'm going to do this big square at the top. And I would really like to use, I wanna say turquoise? That might, might, bleh, that might be too much blue at the top. Hmm, maybe, maybe a nice darker red? like crimson perhaps. It's going to end up becoming kind of a dominant color because it gets so much. Actually, I could do two colors in it. So let's start with crimson here. And then let's do, no, not gray, turquoise, since it's such a big square. And if you like that effect, you could do more of your squares large like this. I'm just activating some of that red so it doesn't get lost. And since it's such a big square, I guess I'm just going to let it dry. All right guys, so this top square is still drawing, but I'm gonna try and work around this. So I'll go ahead and try to get a couple more squares done. So let's go with something bright down there. And then over here, maybe something a bright green, emerald green maybe. Just push some of those colors around so we get a little bit better blending. So that leaves only Two more squares. All right, guys, we're almost done. We're in the home stretch. So I have two more 
of these rectangles to go ahead and block in. So we're going to go, I think, with something red here. And then we have a long one over here, which needs something a little different. Maybe purple, although there's a purple right there. So maybe not purple. Oh, you know what? The black actually has multiple colors in it. I'll zoom in. So you don't even need much. It's got red and blue, so it's actually got this beautiful sort of ember effect going on. And you don't want to overload it, and you don't want to disrupt it too much because then you'll lose that. And I believe this was scarlet, so I'm just moving some of that color. And then I'm going to add a little bit more brush out to it. And now I'm gonna let this dry. All right guys, so this has had plenty of time to dry. So we're gonna want to brush away the excess brush out. Then we're going to want to use our rubber cement pickup. And gently start peeling up our rubber cement, or our, rather our masking fluid. And finally, you have a very, very simple watercolor technique that will, you can either use with brush out or you can use with just flat watercolors. That would be perfect for cards or for simple backgrounds. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. You can find links to everything used in the description below. And you using those links helps me out a lot because they're affiliate links. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to learn more about watercolor, check out my watercolor playlist here on the channel and my watercolor basic series at natosoup.blogspot.com. This video was brought to you by Ink Drop Cafe, the Creators Collective. So if you enjoy my art and my tutorials, please do drop by and check out the web comics and other wonderful comic resources that we host on Ink Drop Cafe. And I hope you guys will have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys.